Hello my dear learners, welcome back to our video lesson. Are you ready for today's lesson? Please bring out your week 7 module in Sassy Readiness and Risk Reduction, your assessment paper, and of course, your pen. Also, don't forget to wash your hands and follow the safety protocols. We are now ready to start our lesson. This is Sir Jazil saying, just stay focused. Just be happy and just continue watching our video for today. Let's start. Can you help me remove these things? I will be able to remove these debris and rocks if you answer the following questions correctly. Are you ready? Amazing! Let's start. Guess what part of an earthquake hazard map is being asked? Choose the letter of the correct answer. Here is an example of a hazard map. What do you think is this part of an earthquake hazard map? Is it A, Legend, or B, Title? Amazing! The correct answer is A, Legend. Let's have the next one. What about this? Do you know this part of an earthquake hazard map? Is it A. Symbol or B. Compass Rose? Great! The answer is B. Compass Rose. Let's have number 3. What about this one? Can you tell me what part is this? Is it A. Scale or B. Color? Good job! The correct answer is B. Color. Next question. Can you tell me what is this part of an earthquake hazard map? Is this A. Title or B. Scale? Very good! The correct answer is A. Title. Let's have number 5. What about this one? What do you call this part? Is it A. Symbols or B. Legend? Awesome! The answer is A. Symbol. Congratulations everyone! You did a fantastic job. Thanks for helping me. Now, I need to get out of this room. What will I need to find a safer place to stay? Absolutely! I need a map. Do you know how to interpret a hazard map? Don't worry because we will learn about it today. First, 
please help me find the map by reading the objectives of this day's lesson. Your goal for today is to Number 1. Define what is a hazard map. Number 2. Identify and differentiate the 7 map colors of earthquake hazard. And number 3. Interpret an earthquake hazard map. There it is! Thank you again for helping me. Now, I will help you with today's lesson. First, let's define what is a hazard map. Do you have an idea about this? I will be giving you 5 seconds to type your ideas in the comment box below. I will be monitoring the premiere of this video and those of you who will be participating actively will be given additional points in your assessment papers. Very good! A hazard map is a map that highlights areas that are affected by or are vulnerable to a particular hazard. They are typically created for natural hazards such as earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, floods, and tsunamis. Hazard maps help prevent serious damage and deaths. What we are going to talk about is how to make yourself or other people's lives safe when an earthquake occurs. On your first activity, we talk about the different parts of a hazard map. Let us now discuss and define all of them. Here is an example of an earthquake hazard map. We have seven important components of a hazard map. First, we have the compass rows. Do you have an idea about what is a compass rose? You can again type your answers in the comment box below. I will give you 5 seconds. Fantastic! A compass or sometimes called a wind rose, rose of the winds, or compass star is a figure on a compass, map, nautical chart or monument used to display the orientation of the cardinal directions or the north, east, south, and west and their intermediate points. It is also the term for the graduated markings found on the traditional magnetic compass. Here are some examples of a compass rose. Just remember that its main purpose is to give directions. Another component of a hazard map is the title. I will give you another 5 seconds to key in your ideas about what is a title's purpose in a map. Excellent! From the word itself, a title tells what the map is all about. It is an important component of a map because it tells the readers what is the map all about. Without the title, the map will be useless to anyone who is going to read it. The title will remove any confusion on what the map is all about. Aside from the title, we also have symbols. What do you think is the purpose of symbols in a map? You can again type your answers in the comment box. Great! Symbols are small pictures that stand for different features on a map. A symbol is often drawn to look like what it represents. For example, a triangular shape is often used to denote a mountain. A desert is often shown by a group of dots 
that might look a little bit like sand. Here are some examples of symbols in a map. Another important component of a map is the legend or key. Again, please type your ideas about this word in the comment box. Incredible! Legend or key is the part of a map that explains the meaning of symbols and colors. This part of the map explains the meaning of different symbols and colors placed on the map. It typically includes a sample of each symbol like point, line, or area, and a short description of what the symbol means. It is important because it guides the readers on the different symbols and colors used on the map. The next one, we have colors. What do you think is the use of colors in a map? Type your answers in the comment box below. Awesome! Colors on a map are used to represent data or differentiate the different areas of the map. In a hazard map, colors are used to differentiate the levels of danger in the different areas or places. Here is an example of colors in a map. We have here different colors used to represent the seismic design category or SDC. Seismic design categories are the categories of how hazardous an earthquake is. It is represented by seven colors. We have Number 1, the Seismic Design Category A, represented by the color white. In this category, the earthquake hazard has a very small probability of having a damaging earthquake effect. There are also no potential effects of shaking. Number 2, the seismic design category B, represented by the color gray. In this level, you could experience shaking of moderate intensity. For the potential effects of shaking, moderate shaking felt by all. Many will be frightened. Some heavy furniture will be moved. A few instances of fallen plasters and damage is slight. Number 3 Seismic Design Category C, represented by the color yellow. Under the earthquake hazard, you could experience strong shaking. The potential effects include strong shaking, damage negligible in buildings of good design and construction, slight to moderate in well-built ordinary structures, and considerable damage in poorly built structures. Number 4 is the Seismic Design Category D0, represented by the color light brown. Number 5, Seismic Design Category D1, represented by the color darker brown. And Seismic Design Category D2, represented by the color darkest brown.
these have the same earthquake hazard where you could experience very strong shaking. The darker the color, the stronger the shaking. Under the potential effects, you could experience very strong shaking, slight damage in specially designed structures, considerable damage in ordinary substantial buildings with partial collapse, and damage is great in poorly built structures. And the last one is the seismic design category E, represented by the color red. Under the earthquake hazard, near-major active faults are capable of producing the most intense shaking. Potential effects include strongest shaking, damage considerable in specially designed structures, frame structures are thrown out of plumb, damage is great in substantial buildings, with partial collapse, buildings shifted off foundations. Here is the summary of the seven colors of seismic design categories. SDCA with the color white, B with the color gray, C with the color yellow, D0 with the color light brown, T1 with the color darker brown, and T2 with the color darkest brown and E with the color red. That is how colors are used in a hazard map. Another component of a map is the scale. Again, type your ideas about what is a scale in the comment box below. A scale is the ratio of a distance on the map to the corresponding distance on the ground. This simple concept is complicated by the curvature of the Earth's surface, which forces scale to vary across a map. It shows the proportion of a map to the real life. The last component of a map is the grid reference. Please type in the comment box below the things you know about this term. Grid reference includes the intersecting lines to help locate specific places on the map. In some maps, it is also called border. Here is an example of grid reference in a map. It is the intersecting lines. Those are the different components of a map. Did you understand all of them? That's great! Now that you have learned and understood the different components of a map, let me test if you can effectively use your knowledge in this sample map. Answer the following questions by using the given earthquake hazard map. You can key in your answers in the comment box below. Answer the following questions by using the given earthquake hazard map. Here is your reference map. Number 1. How many places are near the danger zone or fault line? Awesome! The answer is 19. Number 2. Is Nasugbu near the danger area? Fantastic! 
fantastic? The correct answer is no. It is not close to the fourth night. Number 3. Is Tanay under the Seismic Design Category C? Incredible! The answer is yes, because it is on the color yellow line. What are the four places that are directly located under the Seismic Design Category E? Outstanding! It is Santo Tomas, Patay, Taguig, and Muntinlupa. Number 5. How many places are directly on the Seismic Design Category C? Great! The correct answer is 10. Congratulations everyone! You have truly understood our lesson for today. Now, can you please help me get to a safe zone area? Fantastic! Please use the map given to you. Please type your answers to the following questions in the comment box. This map will be your guide in helping me get to the evacuation area or the safe zone. Help me choose between A or B. Very good. I should take option B. Where should I go now? A or B? Amazing! I should choose A. Should I go A or B? I should choose A. Where should I go now? A or B? Fantastic! I should choose B. Should I go A or B? You got it! Option B will get me to the evacuation area or the safe zone. Thank you very much for helping me again. You have really understood our topic for today. Good job everyone! Did you know that you can also create a simple hazard map of your home? Yes, you can. You can use the basic skills in using the PowerPoint application or any productivity tools you have learned on your empowerment technology subject. You can follow my short tutorial. Just follow the acronym LIFE. L means layout. You can first draw the layout of your house on a paper to be your guide. The layout includes the position of the different rooms or parts of the house, including the exit and entrance points. It is easier to understand if it is in a top view layout. 
just go to the Insert tab, then click Shapes. You can now add any shapes for your layout. You can also add colors to the shapes by going to the Shapes Format and Shape Fill option. Next is I, which means indicate. Indicate the names of every room or parts. You can name them according to your own preference. Just go to the Insert tab again and click Word Art. Type the name of the room and place it inside your layout. We also have letter F, which means finalize. In this part, you can add different elements to make your hazard map more understandable and appealing. You can put the guide arrows for the exit points of the house. You can also add compass if you want to. And for the last one, we have E, which means execute. Your map will become useless if your family members are not able to execute and follow the map properly. Practice and try to follow the directions on the map. Print it and place it where everyone can see. By doing this, all family members will be reminded about it. Always remember, we can save lives by doing the acronym LIFE. Very easy, right? Now, I can say that you are equipped and ready to face any hazard. To sum up our lesson for today, what did you learn in this video? I will give you 10 seconds to type your answers. Amazing! We have discussed about the different parts of a hazard map, the different colors of an earthquake hazard, how to interpret an earthquake hazard map, and how to create a simple hazard map. Why do you think it is important for us to be prepared for an earthquake hazard or any hazard? Again, I will give you 5 seconds to type your answers. That is correct. As the popular saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Preparing for any hazard or disaster before it happens is the best way to save our lives and avoid further casualties. We want to be ready and be prepared so that no one in our family will be in danger. We don't know when and how big a disaster can be. The best thing we can do is to prepare for it and always be ready so that when a disaster comes, everyone in our family will be safe. That's it for our topic today. Did you learn something from this episode? I hope you did. See you again in our next video lesson. Again, this is Sir Jazil saying, just stay focused. Just be happy. And just wait for our next Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction episode. Bye! Stay safe, everyone.